How do the Yankees and can the Yankees survive for maybe up to two months without their best player? They can survive, Michael, and they showed it last year. You know, Judge missed uh, about seven weeks last year, and the Yankees still won 100 games. And, you know, for me, the emergence of Clint Frazier allows the Yankees to um, – you know, absorb some of some of the judge problem here. You know, if I look at Clint Frazier, we talked about him a couple weeks ago, right? He has become another Aaron Judge. He, he's hitting over 300. He's hitting home runs. Um, yeah, he twisted an ankle last night. I think he's going to be fine. But you've basically replaced Aaron Judge with a guy that was supposed to start the season in AAA. That is the, the brilliance of Brian Cashman and the Yankees having a, a very deep roster. They talked about length this offseason. They didn't go out and get Machado and Harper because they wanted a very deep roster. And I think if, if guys like Frazier keep playing playing well, um, then, then, yeah, the Yankees can survive Judge's injury. I don't know if you saw the Bill Madden article in the Daily News uh, that said, did Babe Ruth ever hurt his oblique, blame supplements and weights for the injuries? We're seeing a lot of lats, a lot of groins, a lot of oblique injuries. Do you think that might be because of, you know, the working out with the weights and the supplements that have led to these types of injuries? Do you buy that? Of, of course. That, that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's not. this is not some sort of, oh, my goodness, what's going on? Baseball players over the last 10 years have gotten bigger, stronger, faster without the help of steroids in, in, in most of the cases. And so because of that, you're, you're overloading these tissues, you're overloading your body, and it's kind of an arms race, right? So, so pitchers throw harder, so now I have to, as a hitter, I need to create bat speed. And so how do I do that? By getting stronger and working out more. The, the hitters catch up and, and start hitting home runs. Pitchers need to throw even harder. So they start getting hurt. <laughs> Batters have to keep keep up the pace and they start getting hurt more. This is going to be a trend, guys. The, the, when, as long as pitchers are throwing 100 miles an hour and above, as long as players are swinging hard trying to hit home runs, these injuries are going to happen. It seems, though, Mark, that people want to have a scapegoat. So we get tweets and phone calls all the time. Strength and conditioning coach for the Yankees should be uh, brought to task. It's got to be their training staff. I mean, sometimes the baseball gods are just frowning down on you. I don't know if you could put your finger on one person to say, well, it's his fault. There, there is nothing to blame. There, there really isn't. I mean, the, the Yankees, as, as many guys, it's 13 now. There have been teams that had more guys on the IL, right? So um, I, I looked it up. Ten teams over the past, you know, 10, 15 years have had more than the Yankees, right? So it's not like, oh, my goodness, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to a team in Major League history. There have been plenty of teams. Um, you know, the Dodgers back in, I believe it was 2016, won the division. They had 16 guys on the DL at one point during the season. So if that team can get through it, if that team, you can have that, that many injuries, then the Yankees, fans need to just relax. It is April 23rd. The Red Sox are not running away with anything. The Rays, yeah, they're having a nice start to the season. On paper, even without you know some of the big guns with the Yankees, the, the Yankees are still a better team on paper than the Rays. So don't worry about it. Relax. These guys are coming back. Don't try to p point fingers. Enjoy watching the Clint Frazier's of the world and um, you know some of these young Yankees that you probably won't see the rest of the year. And but but let me, let, me, let me just jump in. I'm sorry, Don. I, I don't agree that on paper this Yankee team is, is better than the Rays. I, I mean, Mark. Once healthy. Uh, you, you, well, when it's healthy. Of course, of, but, of course. But that, right that, now, I mean, they, they have Scranton batting from 5 to 9. And also, when they lost, Mar they, they, they lost Aaron Judge last year, they played 500 ball for seven weeks. Yeah. And in yeah. his career, they're 60 games over when he plays. I don't. Th if, if they don't get players back, they'd be in danger of not making the wild card. No, you're, you're right. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I said it last week on your show. This current roster is not a playoff roster. With, with the 13 guys on the IL, this current roster is not going to make the playoffs. But if you start trickling guys back in, you know, guys slowly start getting back. You know, Gary Sanchez is coming back soon. We're going to see, you know, Stanton and, and Duhar within the next month or so. We're going to start seeing other guys get back. Once those guys get healthy, once the Yankees are, are as long as they hold their head above water, they still have the best roster in the division, and they're going to be all right. Now, Michael and I have been arguing excuse or reason. I think somewhere in between has to be the answer because not every loss can be attributed to the fact that they're injured. 
there are some nights that they, even as banged up as they are, have a roster that's good enough to beat the last place Angels or the last place Giants or Chicago or Detroit or Baltimore, teams that they struggle with earlier in the year. Long term, they can't survive this. But in the immediate future, you only have to be as good or better than the team you're playing on that given day. And thankfully, the schedule has allowed them to be able to keep their head above water. Yeah, the, the schedule has, has been very beneficial to the Yankees. And what I would say, Don, is... Uh, if you start having the best players on the Yankees, the, you know, the oldest Chapmans of the world don't have any excuses. You know, uh, whether it's a blown save or whatever, they're, they're, he, he shouldn't have an excuse. Well, we lost tonight's game because uh, so-and-so's hurt. Well, that's, that is a bad excuse. Now, when, when you have a triple A AAA lineup sometimes, it looks like, uh, get shut down by a bad team, yeah, that happens. You know, the, when, when the Yankees scored one run against the Royals uh, last week, everyone's saying, oh, my goodness, look at this. How, you know, how terrible are these at-bats? Well, most of these guys playing shouldn't even be in the big leagues. Forget about starting for the New York Yankees. And, and you have to take a little bit of that when you have these terrible games and the Yankees look like a triple-A team. Sometimes you got to go, oh, well, you know what? 13 of our guys are on the IL, so it kind of is a triple-A team. Who is there anyone uh, of these guys that we're getting a look at right now that you do really like and think could have some potential to stick around or end up being great trade bait later? I I don't want to say these guys aren't these guys aren't good players, but I I think the journeymen and the Toshmans of the world, the Fords of the world, I think these journeymen guys they they kind of are who they are. I don't see I don't see you getting a lot of value for those type of guys at the trade deadline. Now, best case scenario, you have a Luke Voigt situation where you have a journeyman who finally gets a bunch of at-bats and is like, wow, this guy can play. But I, I can almost guarantee you the Yankees dangled Luke Voigt out there on the open market last year, on the trade market last, last offseason, and no one was really biting. So these journeyman guys, they need to prove themselves over a long season and, and sometimes multiple seasons before other teams are going to buy them having trade value. But you like Frazier, though. Oh, my gosh. That, he, he's not a journeyman. Right. Clint Frazier's a stud. And, I, you know, I will, I will take those at-bats. You know, him in the batter's box, he looks dangerous. You talk about... I, I can't look at a stat sheet and, and advanced analytics and, and prove to you why Clint Frazier's a stud. I'm going to look at him in the box, look at the swings he's taken, look how he, he can turn on a fastball but also wait back on an off-speed pitch and know that that guy, as long as he stays healthy, is going to have a great major league career.